Some cameras are lusted after for their style. Some are coveted for their brand. And some attract brain dead people with specs that are half lies. And then there are some cameras that are truly a part of history, like no other camera could ever hope to be. Well, in March of 1959 at the Philadelphia Photo Show, one such camera was unveiled to the wider world. And photography changed forever when Nikon showed off this. The Nikon F. The Nikon F is a legendary 35mm SLR film camera from 1959. A truly great camera that I have wanted for a really long time. And when I saw them lined up in secondhand camera shops in Tokyo, I just had to buy one. So, using a Nikon F is actually a fairly simple affair, as it's a simple camera. So, starting at the bottom of the camera, we have our film speed reminder here. And this doesn't do anything, it's just a reminder, so you can just set it to whatever film you've got loaded. I currently have it set to empty because there's no film in this camera. Next to it, we have our tripod socket. However, this is kind of unfortunate because when you take the bottom plate off by lifting this little lever, turning it around to open, the whole back of the camera actually comes off to load film inside of it. And if you have a tripod plate on it, it blocks you from taking off the back of the camera. So that's a little bit of an annoyance. This was actually fixed on the F2. So moving to the top of the camera, we have our film advance lever and our frame counter. Now the film advance lever might feel a little weird as you kind of have to pull it out past a little sticky point. And that is just because when you push the lever in, it's in its locking position. Now this here is obviously our frame counter and over here we have a little reminder for how many exposures your film has. So you can actually just set this between you know, 20 and 36. It's not coupled to anything, it doesn't really do anything, it's just a reminder. Next to that we have our shutter button, which you know, fires the shutter. Pretty basic stuff. And around the shutter button we have the rewinding advance collar. So when you want to rewind your film, you need to turn it to a for rewind and that will unlock the film and then you can use the rewind knob on the left to wind the film back into the canister then when you want to shoot again switch it to A for advance wind and shoot so the shutter speeds on this camera range from one second all the way up to one one thousandth of a second however we also have a T and B mode so the bulb mode works by holding down the button like so. And then the T mode works by locking the shutter open on the press. And then to close it, you have to just turn the shutter speed dial to another position. Like so. Now one unusual thing about these cameras is that you can see this little FX kind of window here. And you can actually change this by lifting up the shutter speed collar here. And then you can change it to different settings. Now you might be wondering what this is for. And this is for like old school flash bulbs and other various flash mechanisms. These aren't relevant today, just leave it on FX and then you can hook up your flash with a sink port or you can use one with the adapter for over the rewind crank which will give you a hot shoe. But just leave it on FX, nobody's using flash bulbs today, I hope. So on the back of the camera, we have basically nothing except this little silver button here which if you push in, will pop off the prism. Like so. Now, if you're pushing this in, please use a piece of plastic or something. Don't use metal as you don't want to scratch the camera up anymore. And that takes off the prism. And then we can also take out the focusing screen and change it out for different ones or mount a different prism. And it just clips back into place nice and easy. So in the front of the camera, we have a few more controls and they're all pretty simple. This one on the left here is your self timer. So cock the camera. Wind the self timer, press that in, and it takes a self timer shot. Pretty standard. Over here we have our depth of field preview, so if you push that down we can see the aperture stepping down. Uh, here's your lens release, standard Nikon F lens release. But there is one last thing on this camera which is a little bit unusual, and that is the mirror lockup. So to see how that works we need to take the lens off. So. Over here on the left of the lens mount, we have this little switch. And if we put that to the red position, 
which is now the up position, and then we wind and fire the camera, the mirror stays up. Also, the shutter speed is set to a second. Now this means we can take multiple pictures with the mirror locked up, as you can see. And the mirror will stay up at all times. Now the reason this is important to point out is because the Nikon F and the F2 are the only two F mount cameras that can safely use the invasive fish eyes and invasive wide angle lenses like the 2.1 centimeter F4 where the lens actually goes into the mirror box of the camera and then you have to use an external viewfinder which fits over the rewind crank. It's a little crazy looking um, but I also want to get one of those lenses at some point. And then to bring the mirror down, we just push in on this little switch, turn it to the down position, and the mirror is released. And then it works as normal. So now that we know how to use our Nikon F, let's uh, load it up and go shooting. So the lens I have on this tank is a 5cm f2 lens from around 1963. Now this particular lens had actually been CLA'd before I bought this and the reason I wanted one of these centimeter lenses is because it is the original lens that this camera came with. Well not exactly the original lens but an original lens for the time period. Now when it comes to using f mount lenses on the Nikon F you can kind of just use any f mount lenses you like because if they have an aperture ring, they still work. So you can take something like this very nice 105 F2 DC Nikkor, stick it on your Nikon F, and it'll work just fine. Now, as the camera does not have a light meter built in, I use this external TT Artisan light meter. That works just fine. All you need to do is set your ISO aperture and then adjust the shutter speed until the green light shows. It's quick, simple, and easy to use. It's hard to overstate how revolutionary the Nikon F was, as it was the first camera to bring together all of the features needed for a professional SLR. Things like a spring-loaded diaphragm where it opens back up automatically after taking a shot. Or having the mirror return to the down position instead of staying up until the film is advanced. It was also the first with a complete set of high quality lenses from 21 all the way up to 1000 millimeters. It was the first to have mirror lockup, first to have 100% viewfinder, first to have interchangeable finders and focus screens, and it also had a 250 exposure back option. And I believe it was the first SLR to have a motor drive capable of 4 FPS back in 1959. So the Nikon F at the time was a huge leap forward to bring all of these features together. And that's why the Nikon F was and still is a big deal. 
it set the standard so damn high and it caused such a massive shift in the industry that it almost killed off Leica as a company when photographers flooded to the Nikon F. And to put this in perspective, Leica at the top of their game sold around 220,000 M3s and Nikon sold 862,000 Nikon Fs. Now when you're buying a Nikon F, it is worth it to buy it from a reputable shop or a dealer. With cameras this old and in this condition, it's more than likely that these will need a CLA or clean lubricate and adjust if the seller does not state that one has already been done. Now I bought this F with the 5cm f2 lens from Kitamura camera in Shinjuku, Tokyo on my trip to Japan. Now when buying an F, there are a few variations you want to look up because you need to kind of know what you're buying before you pull the trigger. Now when I was looking for a Nikon F, I wanted a later model with the old logo on the top plate and also I wanted the plain prism for the iconic Nikon F look. Now this particular camera has a serial number starting with 673 which is from around, I believe, 1965. The first Nikons actually started with a serial of 6.4 and getting a good condition 6.4 would probably set you back a few bob. Now this particular camera actually set me back around 250 euro with the yen exchange rate and tax-free shopping that you get as a tourist in Japan, which seems to be a decent price considering the condition and the fact that I bought this directly from a shop and not from some guy selling one second hand. Now, if you are buying a Nikon F, I would try and get the plain prism if you can. Now, they are the most sought after version and they can cost a little extra. But if you do want to buy one with this prism, make sure it's in good condition with no major dents. Mine is a tiny one on the top and no desilvering of the mirrors inside. Now, you can get the meter prisms as well, which tend to be a little cheaper, but they are quite heavy and a lot of them, the actual meter inside will have died because it's quite old technology but you can still use it without the meter just fine. However, I think if you're gonna go without a meter, definitely get the plain prism. Now when it comes to build quality, the Nikon F is just insane. And honestly, it smokes the best cameras of today. It's an elegantly simple, mechanical lump of metal and glass. And even though this camera is nearly 60 years old, it is still working perfectly. It's heavy duty brass construction does make it a heavy beast, but this actually worked out for some people like Don McCullen, who was said to have been saved by his Nikon F that took an AK-47 bullet for him in Vietnam. Also, using a Nikon F is just a special experience. Looking through the massive 100% viewfinder, it's just lovely. All you're looking at is a nice, clean focusing screen. There's no meter, no readouts, no clutter at all to distract you from taking the shot. All you need to do is frame, compose, and shoot. The controls are also smooth and tactile with a lovely mechanical feel. And as you turn the shutter dials and wind the film, you can sense the history and moments that cameras like this at over 60 years old have seen and captured. 
Now, one thing that drew me to the Nikon F is the history and the historical photos that have been taken with it. It was the camera of the photojournalist of the period and has captured some of the most iconic photos in the mid 20th century. The Nikon F was carried by many into the field from the Vietnam War to the later parts of the civil rights movement and into the troubles of Northern Ireland. And I would say that our perception of the world was definitely changed by the Nikon F and those who carried it at the time. So if you do buy a Nikon F, make sure to use it. The best way to pay respect to the F is to use and experience one of these cameras. In today's world of sharpness, IBIS, megapixels, video specs, people complaining that the eye autofocus is not absolutely perfect in all conditions, the Nikon F just lends a perspective that shows us that all you really need is a shutter, exposure controls on a lens, and a light type box to take great photos. And maybe this is why the Nikon F might just be the best camera ever made.